<laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to WCPF Tech Podcast. Um, usual, the usual clientele. Me, the god, the man who knows everything, the man who is never wrong. Square Enix, Square Enix still hasn't been bought by Sony. I never said it was going to be yesterday. <laughs> it will happen. <laughs> or, well, I said Until they will be bought. Does. I will say, Until I did, it well, does, to be fair, wrong. my first argument was that Square Enix would be bought. And I am claiming half victory because the western side of Square Enix was bought. Half yeah. victory is not a victory. I'm still claiming half a victory, and then <laughs> when the rest of Square Enix is bought, I will claim the full victory. But, I, what I, if they bought by Microsoft? What, what, they've still been what bought. I did say that Square Enix would be bought, and then I did sort of expand it, thinking they would be, and I, and I still say they would be the best option for Sony. Now, whether Sony is smart enough to pick up on that and listen to the person who's always right, I don't know. It's it's the only one that can buy Square Enix because Japanese companies don't want to be bought by foreigners. So Microsoft no, is out. True. No matter what, no matter what they do, they're out. Uh, but yeah, it would be the smartest option because, well, I've already said why. But anyway, so me always right, and I'm still classing that as a half right because. They did get partly bought. Uh, always right. We have we have Francesco. Who's always wrong. I don't think he's <laughs> always wrong. <laughs> no, but I just wanted to make a joke. I think, don't think you're always wrong. It's just when you disagree with me, you're always wrong. <laughs> That's the difference. I don't agree with, uh, with Sauron here, Francesco. Uh, yeah. what, what about Sauron? I told him, don't disagree with Sauron. No. Oh, Sauron? <laughs> yeah. You How are. rude. <laughs> I'm, more a, I'm more a Gandalf or a... Um... I don't see a beard. You need a wide flowing beard for that. Well, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not like 400 year old. <laughs> I only <laughs> feel it. <laughs> and then we have Alessio, who's now offended me by calling me Sauron. I'm more of a, in fact, just to wind people up, I am more of a he who must not be named. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, there we go. That's gonna... So anyway, on the subject of uh, on the subject of he who must not be named, just as a topic that wasn't put in the uh, list, let's talk Hogwarts Legacy for a few minutes. Because that's obviously what I've been playing. It's something that, you know, I've done my review in progress. The review will be up by the time this goes out. Full review. And just the fun around it. All the bullshit. I'm just going to say every single outlet that now claims to be somehow high and moral. I'm looking at, I don't know what it, Reset Era and sudden The Gamer and fuck knows whoever else, every single one of them claiming some sort of moral superiority now, you are also full of fucking shit. You are all so full of shit, massive hypocrites, because yes, J.K. Rowling is a cunt. We know that. We know what she said. However, you never, ever had the same stance when it came to reviewing Far Cry 6 when... What was it? Ubisoft higher ups were, you know, committing sexual harassment, a bit of rape, over abuse. Oh no, you didn't have any standards then. Suddenly you do. Fuck off. Anyway, that's me done on that subject. Just to get that, <laughs> just to get it over and done with. Yeah, well, and then there is that one, uh, one out of ten review, which is really well. Uh, uh, they didn't play the game anyway. It was just a way to vent out their frustration at rolling and whatever. But I didn't yeah, even but... read this. I just I just skimmed through and they didn't play the game. So I, yeah, I I read about half of that and I just thought, who the fuck is this idiot? And they are a <laughs> fucking idiot. They, you know what? 
it's not even a case of that. One, they've intentionally damaged the meta score just out yeah. of spite, which can, I'm not saying it has in this case, it may have, they may be performance based aspects when it comes to the employees. So, what they've decided to do is all the developers who've worked on the game who probably don't agree with JK Rowling, they've just gone, ah, well, you worked on a game, I don't like the person who created the universe, so I'm going to fuck you. Not fucking JK Rowling, she gets paid regardless. All they've done is stuck it to the developers. So all these people claim they care, they're all full of shit. Every single one of them. The only person who cares is me. <laughs> also, by using this kind of clickbait headlines, they're just really doing it for the clicks. Not yeah, for... yeah, of course they are. Yeah. They're all they're all so full of fucking shit. It, it baffles me. Every single Besides... one of them. In fact, Besides... I, I get to say now, every single one of them, I don't respect a single one of them. And you know what? I hope Hogwarts Legacy sells m- sells more copies than any other game in history just it to is. piss them off. I, I, was, I was saying all this, but all those, all this negative talking about game and everything, the controversy is making it more is making it more popular than ever because everyone is checking it out. I mean, on Steam it's breaking records yeah. and it's a single player game. The thing. Both of you, in fact, anybody, the comments know that, you know, one of the leading comments is about how how I'm woke and how I'm SJW and <laughs> fuck knows whatever else. And in this case, I'm thinking, you know what? Yeah, I don't like JK Rowling, but fair play to her. Go JK Rowling, get the money just to piss these people off because they're intentionally damaging the workers. I just don't... I've got no respect for any of them. I don't... I, I understand the disliking Rowling, but time, time to damage other people be, just f- over that is... Yeah, it, it grates me. Uh, it's not the, really working. It's not really working if they're trying to damage well, them. Well, it's the harassment campaigns. It's sudden when the, the crea- problem, yeah. when the creating a, creating a site is this streamer playing the wizard game. It's like, yeah. fuck off. I should be. I wish I were a. In fact, no, I don't wish I were a streamer. That's a lie. I never wanted to wish I were a streamer. I can't go that far. I can't go that far. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. No. Oh, just just as a cliff note, uh, as Francesco said, the game is probably selling very well. We don't have uh, real figures now, but we know that the game uh, yesterday, just yesterday, it uh, reached over eight hundred. Uh, uh, a thousand uh, concurrent players on Steam, uh, yeah. so that's uh, that puts it at the eighth place ever in uh, just be you know just uh, behind the New World and uh, Elden Ring. But uh, you know it can still probably go higher today since it's a Sunday. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and also uh, you know unlike other games, for example, New World, Elden Ring, they are not available or uh, on any other store on PC, but Hogwarts Legacy is, for example, it's available ne- on Epic Store. So it's not even the full picture of uh, of PC gamers, and then that's just PC gamers. Yeah. You know, the game will also come out on even on old generation consoles, even Eventually. on Switch. Yeah. Switch. Yeah. So basically, it's uh, fair to imagine the game will eventually sell like 15 million copies or even more. Well. Well, I yeah. mean, just in the just on Steam alone, in the in the um, deluxe edition, they guaranteed over half a million deluxe edition copies of on Steam alone. You knew that because of the three day early access stuff. So it, you know, and most people, I, I want to say most people, a good chunk of people don't buy the deluxe edition. So you're probably looking at an insane amount of people. Hello, cats. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. It also it also broke the record. I think oh, it became the what was it the second uh, biggest uh, uh, I think single player launch on Steam and also uh, the biggest uh, 
single player game streamed on uh, Twitch. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, it's it's doing very and also well the I'm not sure what your score well, is going to be, Chris. I'm but, probably uh, going to say the initial things. I've not actually decided myself. The way I decide a, a score is by writing the review and then reread my review and decide a score based on that. I usually have a slight idea in my head, so I think it's going to be around the eight mark. But, you know, if my review is insanely glowing, then I might up it to eight and a half or nine. Or if my review says this game is utter dog shit, then I probably won't give it eight. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just saying, you know, uh, before the the one town review, I, I don't know where it's at now, but before that it was around uh, 8.5 or 8.6 average meta score. Yeah. Which is you about know. right for what I'm thinking. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that's that's out of the way. I guess we can move to earnings. What fun! <laughs> well, I yeah. ate twelve pence yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not those words. Okay. But uh, yeah, uh, it was kind of a big week for uh, uh, earning reports uh, in game in the gaming industry. Uh, firstly, there was Take Two. And actually, they failed to meet their expectations for the quarter. And uh, they will be doing some cost-cutting measures as well. Of course they will. So the they've, they've, made, some... they've made money, but it wasn't enough money. They didn't make all the money, so let's sack people who make the games. No. Yeah, that, that is unfortunate. Uh, it, they didn't say outright it would be layoffs, but it's probably going to be layoffs. And well, I've got uh, an idea. sack the people who earn more money right at the top who don't actually fucking create anything. Is that difficult? Mm. Or maybe, you know, maybe Zelnik could do with a pay cut. <laughs> yeah, I doubt it. Um, how could he ever and... live without all that money? I know. How, could he, how can he buy his 19th anyway. seaside villa? Uh, you know, the bad news. Uh... Is that uh, Marvel's Midnight Suns basically flopped commercially, <laughs> even though it was well reviewed and Chris also liked it a lot. But uh, I mean, Midnight Suns didn't do, do well commercially, so uh, that's one of the reasons for the lower uh, earnings. But at uh, the same but... time, it's the expectations of uh, I want to know how many copies it sold. Because, one, what were the expectations too high? Did they just think, it's got the Marvel name on it, it's going to sell bajillions of copies? Because if they thought that, then whoever thought that needs to be, well, sacked. And it will be a higher up who thought that, because and getting paid a lot of money. So sack them instead of the people who make the games. Yeah, and also, I mean, it's not a... Action adventure game. Uh, it's you know since it's a tactics game, it's yeah. uh, more of a niche game. Uh, so you know the hope is that uh, like most fight access games, for example XCOM, uh, you know they sell well over time. So hopefully the same will be true here. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, but just to compensate, GTA Five. In case you didn't know this game, it sold another five million units last quarter, which is kind of mind-boggling, to be honest. Because what are they uh, selling it to? Everyone has it. What are they selling it to? I'm starting to wonder if Take Two are just buying copies themselves. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. let's just buy another five million fucking copies. Pad up, the, oh, pad up the figures. All I know it's uh, it's up to 175 million units now, and this is kind of insane. But uh, it's probably one of the best-selling games ever, if not the best-selling game ever. It is the best-selling game ever. <laughs> and uh, but it has yeah. been—I mean, it has been released on every single format known to man, even the Etch-a-Sketch. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, that's true of Another Skyrim world. as well, which also sold well, but not nearly this much. Of course, GTA has, you know, wider appeal. Yeah. And, and, yeah, uh, I, I guess GTA is the biggest, it is the biggest name in gaming. And yeah. that, I mean, as much as, like, Call of Duty is up there with name value, but GTA is just the biggest game there is. Yeah, uh, well, it's actually uh, Take Two is referring to GTA as the biggest IP in entertainment period, and I guess it if is. they mean by sales and earnings, they are right. So <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, by and, far. Uh, Clearly, I mean, the only way that something beats it is if you, instead of, instead of classing the IP as a separate thing, like, you know, because Captain America is different to Iron Man or whatever, the only way you find something bigger is by just classing Marvel as one IP. Yeah. That's the only yeah. way to class something as bigger than GTA. Yeah. Well, I wonder why they aren't doing any kind of uh, adaptation, like a movie or show. Based in GTA. I suppose it's difficult because the the reality is GTA doesn't tend to have the greatest of stories. The best time, yeah. the best story for GTA was when it ripped off Scarface in Vice City. Vice City, yeah. So I'm gonna say, so to create a GTA game, a GTA film is essentially, you know, so we just copy Scarface then do it. <laughs> yeah that yeah there's nothing unique to that that they can say the the thing about they GTA, can differentiate it, yeah. Yeah. The, I, then again, I'm saying that but they did manage to create films out of they are managing to create a um a Super Mario film and you know they did really well with the Sonic films. So you know, yeah. yeah, but you know that you know the difference is that those are recognized. I made immediately recognizable. GTA, like you said, it's just. I say every yeah. single. Yeah, I'm gonna say every single. It's not that you. Every single game unique. is. Every single game's got a different main character, and which one do you pick? And yeah, so yeah, I don't. And to be fair, for the size and scale of GTA, and the fact that GTA sells because it's just massive open world sandboxy fun. Crimey fun, shooty, shooty, bang, bang fun, in a good way, not Call of Duty way, is that there's no, you can't really get put that across on film great. Probably the best film I ever saw when it came to making the shooty, bang, bang action fun was was shoot, not shooter. What was the one with Clive Owen? Where it was shooter, I think. I'm sure that I can't remember now. Clive Owen in a really good action movie, which was just pure mindless violence insanity. Yeah, I guess it would have to be a film where you you basically can do whatever you want, you know. In theory, well, it, it makes you feel like that, and you can grab vehicles. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I've, I remember the film name. It was Shoot 'Em Up. Shoot 'Em Up. Mm. A brilliant film. I recommend it to anybody. It's just Mm. pure fun. And Clive Owen's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, he is. But, you know, my question is to you regarding GTA. Does the insane success of GTA 5, even compared to previous GTA games, uh, kind of set up the the expectation of GTA 6 perhaps too high? Is it too much yes of Yes and no. Um, yes, in the sense that, yeah, some people, there are going to be idiots on top of take, 2K, uh, take 2, such as Zelnik, who's probably thinking, oh, well, GTA 5 sold 170 million copies, so it will sell 50 million in the first week. Which isn't going to happen, obviously. However, there are also going to be people who just think it did sell 175 million copies over the space of when was it released? 1812 or something? 2013. 
Yeah. So it was released in 1812. So it was released 211 years ago. So <laughs> so yeah, it's still it's sold well over those 211 years, but yeah, some people will recognize that, uh, but there are going to be unreasonable expectations. But the other thing is they're also going to they're going to fall foul when it comes to GTA Online because a lot of people play it for that and with GTA 6 when it comes out what are they going to do are they going to try and merge the GTA Online and people carry things over or that's going to be people have spent tens of thousands and probably some people probably spent hundreds of thousands no I'll call it tens actually tens of thousands on this which will get shuttered and everybody moves over to GTA 6 online or will they just call it GTA Online? Will they just what will happen with GTA Online? And also, will it be as fun? Probably. The GTA Online part will be as fun, but they've found out very quickly with Red Dead Online that you can't just recreate the same thing and it sakes off. Yeah, well, I mean, Red Dead Online just has a very different style of gameplay. I think uh, we've talked about this before uh, in some podcasts, but Red Dead, uh, I think, and um, it's it's a much slower paced gameplay. Oh god, yeah. Game, which I think fits the single player very well, in my opinion. Which oh great, god, no. It 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 doesn't fit online well at all. So uh, I guess that shows in the. You know, in the numbers, but uh, uh, yeah, I think yeah, it's it's a big question what they're going to do with uh, GTA 6 online. I don't think GTA 5 online will be shuttered, you know, as long as people are playing it and paying for it. No, no, but, uh, it won't be shuttered. Yeah. But the the aspect is that it will it will die through attrition more than anything else, for mm-hmm. the simple reason that. When people get GTA 6 with all its, which I assume it will have new, new gameplay styles, it will have improvements. When they get that, they're naturally going to want to play the better version. Yeah, that's just the nature of gaming, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, that is the nature of gaming. That's the whole point. People tend to move on. It's very rare an online game gets to stay where it is. I mean, the only reason World of Warcraft stayed where it is is because, like, no game ever decided to be different. It's right. like every single MMO made after that was practically, you know, this is World of Warcraft, but in space. Oh, this is World of That's Warcraft, sweet. but with anime boobs. <laughs> you know, if we, if we look at uh, MMOs, there are precedents. I mean, for example... Uh, there is uh, EverQuest 2 and uh, EverQuest yeah. 1, and, and both are still going. And, uh, for example, even RuneScape. There is RuneScape, and then there is old RuneScape. So some people like to play the older version of the game. Others uh, play the newer version of the game. So Yes, but uh, those people, we prefer to look at them through closed doors and bars. <laughs> No, I, I know, there there is, and there will always be some people who play it, but I think when the majority of people have moved on, it starts to, you know, it, it, yeah, it becomes it's all about the audience, thing. it's all about having that. I mean, I remember playing, I remember playing old MMOs like Legend of Mia, or I think it was Legend of Mia 2 or whatever, and they eventually shut to everything, and the, the community slowly dwindle. You can get a hard and fast community as long as they stay and as long as it pays to as well, as long as it makes enough money for the developers to keep going not, well, for the publishers in this case if it dwindles too much that GTA 5 online whatever, I don't know what they're going to call it if that side stops if, you know, if, if let's say 90% of the audience move over then the interest in creating new content from for the older version of GTA Online is just going to be like, well, why do we create things for them? They're not making us anywhere near as much money. Because sadly, yeah. that's how, exactly how Take Two think. They don't give a crap about the audience. They care about money. Yeah, well, yeah, 
yeah, eventually they will stop making content for GTA V online or whatever. That's obvious. But, uh, yeah. we'll the only way I think it should work is if they if they essentially merge it all into one thing. But that brings up other issues. Then again, I don't think it does bring up other issues. I was going to say it brings up other issues of people coming into the game when they buy GTA 6, but everybody who's going to play GTA Online when they get GTA 6 has already been playing GTA 5 Online. So I don't actually think for once there's going to be an issue with just carrying over content and just adding the new land. Vice yeah, City. that's this. There was a rumor some time ago that, that that was they were saying this is what they're going to do. They're just going to add on top of what they already have. Was that in a terms rumor? of map? Yeah, I never it's knew not, that. It, it's for a, a, it's like from a couple of years back when they were starting okay. talking about. They were they were saying that this is what they were uh, thinking about adding on top of that, which makes sense. Otherwise, he would just. To me, it, it would be fair. It wouldn't me. be fair, you know. It would be fair for people that spent a lot of money to get back to get on the new game and start over from scratch. Even if they give them all the all the money they used in, in the earlier version, they give it. Yeah. They give. They give it to them. It still wouldn't be fair because there's a time investment that they wouldn't be getting back anyway. Exactly. They would still have to start from all from scratch. There is the other side of the argument, which is basically, well, everyone was going to play, you know, for the first time. And of course, they want to reach an even bigger audience if possible. And everyone uh, who's playing from scratch would be like very disadvantaged. So it's yeah, kind of that, a... that is also true. I suppose true. there's ways of doing it, I suppose. I mean, you know, you, you, you can get your character to fly over to Vice City from. I don't, I can't even, Liberty City, uh, get them to fly over to Vice City from Liberty City, and all they can do is take what you would normally take in a suitcase, so you don't get to take your, you know, you don't get to take um, 500 million guns or whatever, you can only take over, you can only carry over about 500,000 or something like that, it gives you a boost, mm. but then all your other content, all your other stuff is still there in Liberty City. Yeah. Again, yeah, that's it could way. it could work, it could work, but then it sort of says, you know, this universe does not have the internet, so you cannot buy a house overseas, <laughs> and you can't you cannot <laughs> access your bank account with your credit card. It's like <laughs> okay, it's probably going to be a middle ground, yeah. Like yeah. they give you something, but not everything. Yeah, and you can still go back to access whenever or something. Yeah. We'll anyway, see. Nintendo also had a big week, Francesco. Talk about talk about that a bit. The Nintendo Switch is selling like bread, but this is not new, sir. Really good. It's been selling well for a long time. I it think sell- the pandemic was the biggest thing ever for the Switch. Yeah, but it was selling well even before that. It was. Oh, just, it was, but yeah. It was. Ju- it it was just another boost. Like they, they just reported they sold uh, 122 million units, which is a lot. Uh, more than the PS4. More than get on the, well, you know, this always we always say that it's because the Japanese market is more open to smaller consoles, portable handles, so that that probably helped helped a lot. And, just a bit. Uh, but yeah, but investors are not happy. They're not happy because. There is no new hardware announcement. Yeah. And so there's in a bit of a drop in shares. At some point, the... there was kind of a crash in mean, Nintendo shares. Certainly. Yeah. Well, they, I don't know why they, you know, I, I, I may understand why they were expecting something, but honestly, it doesn't make sense for Nintendo to do anything right now, especially with the, with the economy all over the world, yeah. where it's going. It just doesn't make sense to. I to think announce part of, something now. Part of it is also is not. I, I I imagine part of it's down to that, but I mean, I I didn't really pay that much attention. I very rarely pay attention to video game news. Um, but they didn't announce that many great new games, did they? What are going to sell like hotcakes? No, they just have no upcoming Zelda it, game. It was being rumored that this the the reason they're not 
announcing anything is because they're going to announce them together with a new Switch later in the year, like in but, September or so. But that will naturally... Uh, worse. I said that the problem with that is it naturally damages investor confidence because the investors think, well, they've got no games coming out, so nobody's going to buy games, which means no revenue. You know, one very weird thing is they're not taking advantage of the Mario movie in any way. I would expect I would have expected something to come out at the same time, even a minor game. But this is weird because nah, Super Mario weird. Odyssey, Super Mario Odyssey is. How many years old by now? It's like four years old. I don't remember. Yeah. And it, it's weird that they're not doing anything with it. I think they only made a, one new mainline Mario for the Switch, right? Yeah, which is weird. Uh, this is weird too. Well, it was like this uh, for actually no, because they released uh, they released two of them on the on the Wii U. Well, one was the 2D one uh, was the new Super Mario Bros. the 2D game, but it were still two of them. They just released the remasters and Super Mario Odyssey on the Switch. I suppose we it's do weird. Have to, we do have it's to remember weird. that Nintendo is run by space aliens that do nothing normal anyway. <laughs> yeah. They've never done uh, anything yeah, normal. It's, it's weird. Yeah. Maybe they're just they they're probably expecting Zelda to do everything for them. Well, Zelda which will it probably it probably will, but it it's weird well, that they're not taking it. One game does not does not a year make. <laughs> no. Well, they released they released some stuff already. They released a new Fire Emblem. It's not like they aren't do, and doing anything. It's just weird they're not doing anything with the Mario movie. That's the very weird thing. Yeah, I think it's still their biggest IP by far, about, except Pokemon, but yeah. Yeah, it's, uh... yeah but it's really weird. I, suppose, I mean, though, uh... they're not going to be that concerned because they're going to make money from the Mario movie itself. Uh, I remember re I remember hearing something. Um, can't remember what what a YouTuber anyway. Someone who works in the industry who's worked in the industry, and they had a discussion with with um, Capcom when it comes to you know the old Van Damme Street Fighter film, and every single time that's like shown, Capcom get a million dollars. Ah. So for a horrible movie, for a horrible I movie like too. it. It's yeah, it, it, shit, it, but yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So obviously Nintendo are thinking, you know, Mario movie. If it does well, ka-ching. And then yeah, I might be there. And to be fair, they'll probably will just re-release something on the Switch store. They'll you know they'll release like I don't know, Luigi's Sex Dungeon. <laughs> You know the only one, the only game they haven't released on Switch of the Mario 3D games. It's uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2. It's they the only have... one they haven't. Uh, so they may release that. They may, they may do a they quick, may. quick shit part of that then. Yeah, like they did with the Metroid Prime Remaster. They may just shadow drop it, Nintendo Direct, and then release it on the that same day. That wouldn't surprise me. That would make. That would be weird. They're also doing their what? Uh, tent expansion expansion pack for uh, Mario Kart or something. Uh, yeah, well, they're still going with it. Yeah, that's another weird thing. They haven't released a Mario Kart game in ages. And they're just expanding what? Mario Kart 8. Yeah. But, you know, they, they have a, they, I don't know if they don't want to flood the market too much with Mario games, but they had a, they had a weird approach with the... With the with the franchise on Switch, that very few releases, new releases. I mean, the only new one I can think of is uh, made directly by Nintendo in Super Mario Galaxy, because all the other things are either spin-offs or like the Ubisoft game Mario and Rabbids, the second it one. It could just be that they've no idea where to go with Mario anymore. You know, well, they've that gone, could. They've be gone that. from they've gone from like they've expanded beyond the Mushroom Kingdom. You know, to the world, to now the universe, well, the galaxy. Where yeah, well, you know, if, now? if you yeah. know, if they would make an, they could make another Super Mario Odyssey, and it would be good because the game. Super really Mario good. Wormhole. <laughs> In space. Well, they already did that. Super That's Mario Galaxy. Means. That's what I mean. Where can you go after the galaxy? Super <laughs> Mario Extra Dimension. I have the answer. 
They should just do the crossover with The Last of Us and have uh, Pedro Pascal yeah. play yes. Mario. <laughs> play Mario. <laughs> uh, what, what's the cargo? And it's oh, the prin- prin- uh, they'll just make Princess Peach dress up simulator. Yeah. Don't give them weird ideas. Princess Peach is the new Ellie. But yeah. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Francesco knows what I was talking about. Yeah. yeah anyway. Oh, so anyway. Um Nintendo. So Nintendo. But how about so the a game that I will definitely be playing later this year? Um, if it is it coming out this year? I'll awake too. Ooh. Well, if it doesn't get delayed. Uh, I mean, I mean, there is always a chance it will I be love delayed. Alan Wake. They they said it's now playable for some from start to finish, and then that content will be complete soon. Uh, of course, we don't know exactly how they work, so you know, usually uh, it could be coming late this year or early next year, but. Well, they if it's playable that... from start to finish now, then it shouldn't shouldn't be until next year. But yeah, but they have said they will be releasing one game per year starting this year, and Alan Wake Two is the only game they have close to finish. Well, so there you go. And uh, yeah, but they've got a lot on their plate because they are doing Control Two. Yeah. Then they are doing uh, two multiplayer games, one of which is a controlled spin-off, and the other is a free-to-play game uh, codenamed Vanguard. And they are also doing the Alan Wake uh, 1 and 2 remakes. So they've got like five big projects uh, juggling uh, yeah. all of them at once. And, uh, well... No, you, oh, uh, I like, know. I was just confused then. You said Alan Wake. One or yeah, two Max Payne. Max Payne. Yes, I'm thinking Max remaking Payne. Alan Wake 2. It's not even out yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I meant Max Payne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, it's it's a lot. Well, I, I don't know if they will uh, be able to release one game per year. It, it sounds like a tall order and uh, um... a bit. Yeah. I don't know. I, so I think they will be able to. So let's say Alan Wake Two does get released this year, which, if it's playable from start to finish, and we're now in the you know bit of extra content and polishing stage, then it should be released this year. Um, Control. Sorry. Maybe later November, early December. Yeah, or something. they should be this year. The Control Control Two will be the long running thing. Um, and chances are that the multiplayer game in the Control universe will use assets that they're using with Control 2. So part of the development of that is sort of streamlined thanks to that. Remaking Max Payne 1 and 2, it sort of depends how what they're doing with the remake. If it's going to be a quick one, then it won't take as long. Um, you know, you can, you can remake well, we've seen it. You can remake a game in a year. I mean, well, yeah, the 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 GTA remakes, as crap as they were, were done in about three, four months. Well, there were there were more remasters than remakes. Yeah, but yeah, but I think they're not. I think they're doing something different with Max Payne. But it, yeah, yeah. For but, example, the Dead Space remake was done in. Uh, Less than two and a half years, so I guess yeah. that's probably more like. I suppose the uh, the advantage, like you say, a lot of the time. I mean, I don't, I haven't played the Dead Space remake, so I don't know if it expands, if it adds new content. But with Max Payne, I mean, yeah, you're gonna have to have, get new voice actors in, but you've got the script mm. already. You don't need same as anything with the remake. There's there's a good thirty percent of development already done. And yeah. and such as voice acting and everything can be done alongside the actual development of the game because you've already got the script, you've already got everything. So there, a lot of it can be streamlined. So if they're doing Alan Wake 2, if that gets released this year, I wouldn't be surprised to see Max Payne remakes next year. 
simply because the the time allows for it, and they've got enough staff. I'm sure they have. Oh no, they they they've got oh. enough staff. You know, the the weird thing is that they also said, um, basically, uh, the Max Payne one and two remake is still in the concept phase. So I don't know if they. How can is it a concept it. phase? You've already got the games. It's not a concept. <laughs> well, maybe concept in the gameplay. Gameplay yeah. concept. Yeah. Okay. How good is that? I've already got the fucking games <laughs> out. Yeah. It's a concept. Yeah. We've got this idea for a game called Max Payne. <laughs> Never heard it before. Yeah, yeah. It's just an idea. It's before. just an idea. It's only in concept. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it also... Sounds like they will be co-financing in most of this project. So uh, on one end, they are, uh, you know, kind of um, putting a lot on these projects financially as well. But uh, on the other end, they are expecting, uh, of course, higher royalties because uh, since they are part of the financiers, uh, you know, they they will also get higher higher royalties uh, for Max Payne, project. I suppose. I suppose the only thing they may get everything if in the sense that they may have done a deal with Take Two just saying, you know, we'll you know, we created it originally. We'll we'll remake them, we'll pay for everything, and we just give you you know five three percent, two percent, five percent for of each copy sold for the light you know, for the licensing, or they just gave them an upfront fee. I would have arranged an upfront thing. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, well, it it is good at least that someone is doing something with Max Payne since uh, Rockstar. Don't give a shit. Take two, don't yeah, care. basically they've only made Max Payne three, but it it was like eleven years ago. So uh, and Rockstar certainly doesn't have any more bandwidth <laughs> to do. I really uh, don't believe that for a second. Rockstar have got a lot of bandwidth to do so much. They've got studios everywhere. Yeah, but they're all working on uh, GTA Online or GTA Six. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, one of the one of the byproducts of uh, the success of GTA Five, which we discussed earlier, but. It is that basically Rockstar uh, mm-hmm. is making one game per generation <laughs> at this point. That's yeah. the the sad thing. Whereas they used to do a lot more games, you know, they used to do Midnight Club, uh, they used to do yeah. Bully and uh, Manant and uh, lots of things. Uh, even Rockstar Table Tennis was fun, but uh, now it's just GTA, you know. Uh, yeah, maybe and maybe Red Dead Redemption every six seven years. Yeah, that one too. But you know, Red Dead Redemption just only only <laughs> only got to fifty million units, which is kind of peanuts compared to GTA. Yeah, yeah but it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It would have. Exactly. To be fair, but... they can still re-release it next generation. It'll get. Oh, they will. Oh, they will. They will. I'm gonna say. Yeah. People are like, uh, God, my goodness, you've sold like 50 million copies of this game and we still don't have the next generation updates. So the, the, st- the game is still isn't optimized for PlayStation yeah. 5 yeah. and Xbox Series X. Anyway. So, That'll do that. But anyway, there we go. But anyway, I, well, I've already covered what I've been playing at the start of the show, so mm. I don't need to talk about that. No. We've covered Hogwarts Legacy. What are you? Yeah. What about you, Francesco? What are you playing? Uh, let me think if I can talk about Yeah, I can talk about that. Well, I've been playing Hogwarts Legacy too myself, but still early, don't have an opinion. The, the only opinion I have is they have to optimize the game because I, <laughs> I, wasted, I wasted more than an hour trying to get it to run I don't, I don't think it's their fault because it, it ran, it's always it's run decently for me. It's just because you've got a shit graphics card. I don't have a shit graphics card. You do. It's green. And not... <laughs> it, it's running everything. Up, it, it, it runs everything well, except for unoptimized games. 
which oh, no. is one, one that, I'm going to talk about right games now. That, games that are designed for the red brand, you mean? It's not that they're unoptimized, it's just that the green stuff cannot run it. No, I, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure what I'm going to talk about is, is, hasn't been optimized well for AMD cards as well. Okay. And that's that's uh, Wild Arts, the new the new hunting game from Koei Tenko, EA and Omega Force. And yeah. by the way, by, by the way, uh, it runs like shit almost everywhere. So uh, that was expected. It's Omega Force. No one expected that uh, any game by them to be technically competent or anything like that. But it's a shame that it doesn't run that well because the game is really fun. Although it's not very, very, very original because it feels a lot like Monster Hunter Rise. Like yeah. a lot like that. But you know, it's it, for the first game and for the first game in the in a series it's it's quite good. I've been I have been having tons of fun with it and I'll continue playing it. They they're going to make con, uh, future content for free. So no paid updates, no paid DLC, so that's a good thing. But yeah, it's fun. Just if, if you have the option of playing it on console on console, I'd say go with console because on PC uh they don't have the LSS, they don't have FSR, so they have they have this horrible upscaling filter that looks horrible and doesn't do anything to the performance. So wow. I'd go with I'd go with console because yeah. I mean I I don't have a, I don't have a shitty PC. Uh, contrary to what Chris is saying, my PC is decent, and it uh, should not have your PC is bad. It's just that you've got yeah, the, the graphics card. Graphic yeah, well, uh, okay. Um, I don't, I have a thirty seventy, so it's not a bad, it's not the best card around, but it's not even the worst Just one. The and color, you know, if I, I, I think it may even run worse on AMD because this game just runs badly on everything. I mean, there were people uh, I, I was talking with other people who had access to the game, and there were people with with forty nineties that weren't able to run the game at four K sixty FPS. So yeah, it's... You know, the thing is, is ju just. Someone needs to help Koei Tecmo because yeah, they te their tech is horrible. Their engine is a mess. You know, yeah. it, the bad, the, the weird thing is that Neo Two runs well, even at launch, it run it ran well. I don't know what I, I don't know what has hap what happened since then. Uh, they they have released they are releasing basically three games. The first, well, Stranger of Paradise, which yeah. It's technically published by Square Enix, but it's still yeah, it's on, it. on Team Ninja, Ninja Engine. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, then we have um, Wild Arts and then Wolong. And yeah. all of three are terrible, technically. Yeah, well, <laughs> Wolong, we still don't know that because it's still not out. But the pre-release version was, was what it was, really. And it, you know, it, it, this is scary because they're working. Team Ninja is working on that open world game. Uh, I don't remember the name. Rise of the Ronin. I don't remember. And if there is an open world game with that engine, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know it's going, how, how it's going to end up. But it, it's a shame. Is that it, the Jiggle Physics engine. <laughs> Team Ninja. <laughs> uh, uh, it's. It's a shame because they they're making great games, but there is they're hard to enjoy when you just have to deal with stuttering all the time. This was on PC, on uh, PlayStation Five in performance mode, it runs badly. I mean, resolution is very low, it's very blurry, but at least it doesn't stutter. If if the frame rate drops are more even. Yeah, and well, that's that's, <laughs> that's not a praise, work. but. Yeah. It's one of my gripes with the PC gaming recently, unfortunately. Yeah, it's the console, Yeah, console games have better frame times, which is yeah. better frame pacing. <laughs> well, of course, they have lower frame, well, uh, frame rates, but uh, still... The, re uh, the yeah. reason is always going to be simple. With PCs, it's, you can't, it's never going to be a one-size-fits-all, is it? With consoles, you know exactly what you're working with. Yeah, but, you know, the problem with PC is that no one can run them well, so it's there's a deeper issue. <laughs> because if I get it, we, we, yeah. if I get the issue stuttering with a thirty seventy, and Alessio gets the same issues with a forty ninety, it's not the hardware the problem. Yeah, I, I know what the fine. problem is. You're green, not red. <laughs> 
Uh, you won't, you, you know, I think it's worse because most games have DLSS and you can't use DLSS with your, with your, green, with your red card. Well, clearly it doesn't do nothing work anyway. No, it's because they don't use it. I mean, Kuwait Anko, uh, Wild Arts doesn't have it, and uh, Wolong no, will mean... only have it after LAN. I say all, all you talk, well, with Harry Potter, I'm not having the same issues. Yeah, Hogwarts yeah. Legacy. Yeah. yeah, well, it's probably one game in, in 150. That's like that. Hello, cat. So anyway, anyway. how about you, yeah. Alessio? What are you playing? Uh, um, I, unfortunately, I don't think I can talk about it. Uh, Francesca knows the game I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. But well, the embargo is not until Wednesday, so yeah. I'm afraid I cannot. Fair enough. That that wraps that that side up very quickly then. But after <laughs> we, after we're done talk after we after I've done recording, I want to hear what you're playing. Yeah, sure. I I do I do Luna. I want to know what he's playing. Secrets of Basketball. I mean, <laughs> people can can guess about it. There is a game that's coming out on the fifteenth of the fifteenth. Sorry, and uh, it's a game that was previously a PS5 exclusive. So. You can guess. But... Okay. Fair enough. Well, fair enough. On that note, we will end this and do something different. <laughs> <laughs>